Oh, it's an alignment chart. Where Whoa. are they on it? Whoa, uh, who who knows about this? Alignment charts. AEW alignment chart. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Second Rate Wrestling. On this episode, we're doing alignment charts. You're good, you're evil, you're neutral, you're chaotic. And yeah, we're just going to put one wrestler uh, from AEW or Ring of Honor, wink, wink, on one of the places. It's pretty self-explanatory if you look at it. So I think we will start with who is true neutral? The truest of neutral person. They're just this all-around neutral kind of person. Well, that's... Probably the guy with the Joe. His name is, uh, you might know him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. His name's Joe and he's Samoan. Oh, Roman Reigns. Other, the other oh, one. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, uh, Samoan Joseph. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Joe doesn't have the, the general morality that everyone else has, but I also think that he's not necessarily self-interested in the same way that a lot of evil characters in wrestling would be. Yeah, he does it for, like, the sport. Yeah, it seems like he has sort of this greater thing of, like, ah, yes, the the res- wrestling is a sport, and I will respect you if you can beat me in a wrestle, if you can beat me in a way that I deem to be appropriate i'll respect you uh i didn't really get it when you first suggested it like we're going down the list and you're like oh samoa joe tr- true neutral i'm like surely surely he's evil um but then you know you were like yeah he's for the sport i'm like uh, yeah okay he is a little bit of a rascal he's a little bit of a you know choke you out after the belt type a little guy. bit a little bit but to be fair it's just because he doesn't respect you who does he respect no one right now yeah no i i enjoy joe's current iteration he's always been kind of like a badass I don't know if I'm into Heal Joe. I know I know a lot of people love Heal Joe. Don't know if I'm super into it. The thing about Joe for me is he doesn't change that much between being a face and being a heel. So I don't think that I have that big of a preference apart from just the fact that I want to cheer him. <laughs> so I'd prefer if he weren't fighting the guys that I like. Um, yeah, but no, that's pretty much all on Joe. He's true neutral. He is the centerfold to everyone else. Everyone revolves around Joe. Joe is the sun. Uh, Joe is my angel in the centerfold. Uh, so... N- <laughs> So next we got uh, Neutral Good. Also, uh, while we're here, if you want to drop a like and subscribe, that would be great. Um, Do your own alignment chart. Put in the comments. Who knows? So yeah, uh, for Neutral Good, we have Miss Hikaru Shida. She's good. She's neutral. She just comes out. She's a good person. She just does good things for good people. She like aligns herself. Whoever is on the good side, she's with them. It truly is just a case of like, you're also good. Hey, man. High five. <laughs> like, I like you now. That's that's how it kind of seems. Because, like, for for a while, she was going up against Hater and Baker when they were bad people. But then they they were being good when Hater was a, was champ, right? Yeah. So and then she aligned herself with them. she aligned them. herself with them then, when yeah. they were going up against... Uh, uh, the Outcasts. That's what they called them. <laughs> with, the, with the really cool song and the spray paint. It was a very cool angle and definitely not... L... Loser. 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 I know, there's not much to say when they're just like kind of good. It's difficult to analyze a good alignment. I think lawful good is probably more interesting, but neutral good is just kind of, you're a good person. Karashi is just playing a good person. Also, preface this, we're talking about their characters, not their actual people. Yeah, I don't know shit about how a Karashi is in person. She could be terrible. I don't know her. We don't know. We have no idea. (laughs) This is the problem, is that neutral good... Kind of just means you don't have a character. I like Hikaru Shida's wrestling. I think that she's a very good wrestler. She's so entertaining to watch wrestle. But, like, her character really is just like, I'm a good person. Hey, look. Hey, you bad person. No more. No more. I get kendo stick out and hit you. (laughs) I will hit you with my kendo stick because I don't like it when you're bad. (laughs) Okay, well, let's let's, uh, move on to someone who who we can actually, like, sink our teeth into a little bit. Uh, And that's a neutral evil person. Ooh. Ooh, uh, that's Mr. Christian Cage. I think why we put him in neutral evil is just because he's just kind of, he's doing his own thing. He has a reason and rhyme, like a rhyme and reason for why he's doing the things he's doing, but it's not like, it's not law abiding, but it's not chaotic either. I guess law in this sense would be like the company confines. Like he's not working within the company structure. He's like kind of doing his own thing. He's making his own family. Neutral evil uh, could be like a lot of people because you could just kind of doing your own thing. That's like most heels in wrestling. You'd be lawful when you get like tied to the authority figure. Or when you are someone who specifically plays within the rules but is still a heel. Mm-hmm. Which is really difficult to come across. I can't even really think of any off the top of my head, but I know MJF, they existed. I would. MJF was still cheating. He's still okay. a, a cheating son of a bitch. That's fair. And I hate him. <laughs> well, then, yeah. Ah! <laughs> Um, yeah, no, so that's why we put Christian Cage in uh, Neutral Evil. Been doing some brilliant character stuff lately. Getting booed out of the building. I say lately. 
probably the last year. Pretty much since the split with Jungle Boy. Yeah. Honestly, now that you say it's been since the split with Jungle Boy, I don't know if his heel momentum has slowed down. Like, I'm, I'm thinking about it. There's no point in people really like, oh, we're sick of this guy. But he's sort of the opposite of Chris Jericho, where Chris Jericho is kind of forced to change his character because people are getting sick of what he was doing before. He's the opposite of that, where he will take breaks. Like, he won't be on TV. And I don't know if that's by choice. But it works really well for him because, like, he takes these breaks, I think, at points in time where it would be really easy for his story to feel stale. Yeah. Stale and forced at that point because, like, losing to Jungle Boy could absolutely be something that stalled his momentum as a heel. Mm. But instead, he just kind of left for a second and then came back and it was immediately red hot again. Yeah, that's fair. I think because, yeah, you um, make people miss you. Um, So that's all we have for Mr. Christian Cage. We have Lawful Neutral next. Lawful Neutral is obviously obviously brian danielson yeah it's it's a no-brainer he has till five he has to <laughs> I, yeah i truly i think part of the reason why i suggested brian danielson for this is just i have till five yeah because it is such like a i know the rules i play by the rules mm. exactly how they were written yeah there is a five count before i'm disqualified so i will use that five count yeah yeah and he's he, he does switch between good and bad Pretty seamlessly, I think. That's the other thing for me, is I don't think that there is ever a point in time at which you can be fully set on, Brian Danielson is a face. Brian Danielson is a heel. It's like, mm. well, no, Brian Danielson is a very good wrestler who has a problem with another wrestler. Yeah, especially in this iteration of him in AEW. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, when he was in WWE, it was a lot more obvious at different points in time that he was a face or he was a heel. But it seems like in AEW, he's very much just getting to be like good wrestler as a character. Like, he does have a character, right? You know, like the I have till five, like very much a stickler. His character now is just the best wrestler on the planet. (laughs) Yeah, which when you say it out loud sounds like, oh, he doesn't have much character, but he does is the thing. If you watch him, he has character. It's insane to me that WWE tried to convince you that this man didn't have character until they made him chant yes. Um, yeah. Moving on. We got Chaotic Neutral. This one's pretty obvious if you like take five seconds to think about it. Uh, it's Mr. John Moxley. Yeah, my man is um, does not like rules. He, uh, he hates them. <laughs> the lunatic fringe! <laughs> He's just a crazy guy. What are they going to do with him? It is pretty obvious that John Moxley is the... Uh... The chaotic neutral element of AEW. Yeah, he's also like the heart and soul of AEW. AEW is a chaotic neutral company. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what that means. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, when people say he's the heart of AEW, I agree with that. Oh, absolutely. He's like kept it up so, like he's kept the company on his back. I would say that the thing about Moxley that makes him the heart of AEW is the fact that he was the first person to decide to leave WWE and go to AEW. Oh shit, really? Yeah. He, oh, so wow. he was the first person that made that decision. I mean, I guess you look, you could make the argument that literally every one of the EVPs made that decision because they were all offered WWE contracts before they made AEW. But I guess what I mean is John Moxley is the first person who was currently signed to WWE and he decided to let his contract run out and go to AEW. He showed up on their first paper. Oh, wild. Like yeah. surprise kind of show up or? Yeah, surprise. Oh, shit. I'd like yeah. to see that. Um, but yeah, I think I was watching an interview with him when he was talking about like leaving wwe and he was like this i think he said this was before AEW started but he like started get excited about leaving because he's like oh i can make my own schedule i can go to new japan i can go here this is gonna be great and he, i mean he still does all that while under major contract this is talking about him as like a, a person a person <laughs> uh, back to his character work. back to his character work and why it's why it's chaotic neutral he is someone that will do things that are against the rules if someone isn't looking even if he's even if he's playing the face at the time he is someone that will go kind of against anyone that he doesn't like. Again, like Danielson. It's like, if you piss him off, he's going to fuck you up. Yeah, doesn't matter who you are. And even if you don't piss him off, he'll, he'll have a match with people that he really likes, and then he'll, and he'll fuck them up. You're my best friend, but I have to kill you. <laughs> Eddie, I love you. I'm going to fucking kill you. And Eddie will match that energy, because Eddie is probably chaotic neutral as well. That's true. That's Hey, there's a friend. Bonus, bonus one for you. <laughs> okay. Um, so next we have... Uh, chaotic evil and uh, heads up this one's from ROH uh, so we haven't seen much ROH but we've seen enough to kind of get a vibe for Athena I love Athena so much we watched Supercard of Honor this year you know we got a I got, oh, I got a vibe for what Athena was doing because uh, you kind of caught me up on that and she seems to be fun it seems she's got a little minion thing going on um, she's just 
being evil, I guess. I don't know. You, you can probably speak more of this. Yeah, she's very self-interested. She's utilizing other people for her own gain. She's pitting them against each other in order to keep them from going against her. Mm -hmm. But then it's also the sort of thing where, and I'm going to be honest, I'm kind of fuzzy on this, and I'll correct myself in the edit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But Billy Starks attacked her, who, which is one of her minions. Billy Starks has attacked her, <gasps> had a match with her for the Ring of Honor Women's Championship. She still let Billy Starks remain one of her minions, which is pretty chaotic, if you ask me. That's pretty crazy. Though. That's pretty crazy. Yeah? And also, I think, personally, Athena would like this the most because she likes D and D. That's true. She does. She likes D and D. She came out as Karlak. Yeah, that's so cool. It's so based in her as hell. I mean, Karlak is the best character you could probably choose from Baldur's Gate three. But yeah, I just, I, I, know, I just personally wanted to gush about her coming out as Karlak. Very good character. I watched. Uh, so like again, I don't watch all of Ring of Honor, but I have watched a recap of a lot of the Billy Stark story that she did. I thought that she was really fun in that, as well as Billy Stark's being very fun. But we don't have much more to say. Um, I just like the minion gimmick. I think it's really funny. This is a really good. As a wrestler, just just as an FYI, she's just, just like FYI, a very, good wrestler, very good wrestler. I feel like that's everyone on this list, though. Yeah, it's difficult to be like, oh, this person from AEW is uh, not good, and where turns out them. their new tagline that they're trying uh, kind of works. Kind of works, kind of true. Call us AEW shields, but hey, if the shoe fits. Anyway, let's move on to lawful good. So this one, I think, came out of nowhere because I just said it, and you were like. Fuck that fits. Yeah, so we were struggling. We were struggling to find our lawful, good, uh, aligned wrestler. And then just kind of out of nowhere, Ethan was like, what about Katsuyori Shibata? And I was like, fuck, yeah, that's true, actually. It, well, he, it helps that he doesn't talk much. <laughs> it does help that he doesn't talk much. But he just kind of follows the rules. He's always aligned with good people. Yeah, he aligns with good people. Uh, it's kind of the Hikaru Shida effect of like, you're good, high five! <laughs> I feel like bo in both of these instances, it's a Japanese wrestler. So it could it, just be down I to I think like... it is a language barrier thing. I think part of it is a language barrier thing. Although Shibata, I do like his uh, his whole iPhone phone gimmick. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't the one he just has and goes, bet. <laughs> yeah, bet. Well, I, I, like, <laughs> I like the... Because he didn't spend any time typing is the, is the funny thing about it to me. So there was a point where he, he says to Renee, I like your necklace. <laughs> After having done a promo with Jericho and Hook, yeah. where he said something else through the text-to-speech. Mm. So the implication is that he previously set up yeah. to tell Renee that he likes her necklace. Which means that he saw her and was like, I like that necklace. I gotta make sure that I tell her that. Yeah. I'll put it in like that. If that's not lawful good, I don't know what the fuck is. That's lawful good. That if guy... that's not the utmost goodest thing you can do. And also, like... He's a lawfully good wrestler, mm. which is just which is to say, by law, you have to recognize him as a good wrestler. Yeah. All right. Uh, so next we have Chaotic Good. Um, this one is also pretty. It's cut and dry. It's cut and dry. You, you, you want to? It's Darby Allen. Yeah, it's Darby Allen. I feel like we we talked about him in our Nobody's video. Did we? We did. Oh fuck. He was okay. one of our choices. We tr okay. So in this, we tried to not get any crossover to, between our top ten Nobodies. Um, by the way, check that out if you haven't seen it. Um. <laughs> So we try to have not have any crossover. Uh, we overlooked Darby, apparently. Hey, Darby's really good. He's good. <laughs> he has a style that I feel like nobody else can do. The, the style is throw me. <laughs> the style is I'm going to die in the ring. The, the style is drop me from the rafters. You won't, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the style is, hey, watch this. <laughs> style is real, real glass, cry me a river. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I will say Darby is in a better position to do most of the stuff that he does than a lot of other wrestlers simply by way of being small. Yeah. He's like, like he's what, 70 kilograms? He's a light guy, yeah. And uh, back in the day when Jeff Hardy was doing a lot of the same sort of stuff, mm. Jeff Hardy weighed about probably 95 to 100 kilograms. Mm. That's a big difference. 25 to 30 kilograms, that, that's a small child. It makes a big difference to how much it hurts to fall on things. Like, also, he's like, I feel like Darby wouldn't break. He would kind of bend. Like, his bones, to me, feel like they bend and not break. Yeah, I don't know what it is about them. Um, doesn't eat too much calcium, so they're just bendy. <laughs> they're just bendy. <laughs> like or other or he eats a lot. Well, other people's bones get brittle when they don't eat calcium, but oh. his just get bendy. He's, he's bendy. They don't break. Except his foot, which Jay White, you know. Yeah. He found the one spot that was like where all the calcium went to. We went. <laughs> I can't believe we didn't find a way to put Jay White on this list. Yeah. Fuck. Um, We're stupid. We are stupid. Uh, That's fine. He's chaotic evil. Or, or neutral evil. He's, he's evil. He's evil. So we're moving on to lawful evil now. 
Uh, so lawful evil. I think we have the Bucks. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, they're the EVPs. They own the company. They can bend the rules how they like because they are the company. They are the rules. Mm-hmm. Essentially. They am the rules. Well, it, for me, it's about finding people. They, they're finding people having like uniform infringements and stuff like that. They're being yeah. evil behind their own law, essentially. Yeah, they're creating, they're creating a law. They are lawful evil in the same way that like an evil country in a, in a video game is lawful mm-hmm. evil. Like any Far Cry game. Yeah, like any Far Cry game. Or, or, or any real life government. <laughs> they're, they're dictators. They're dictators. They're also dickheads. You know? well, real life, in real life, just like real life. Just, <laughs> just like, like real, life. real life. Just like real life. Just like real life. <laughs> they always do this. They always do this. They always do this. Fuck them. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Do you even watch the product? Do you even watch the product? I think that the main reason why we put them on this in this spot is because we just wanted to gush about how much we love their new characters. I do love their new characters a lot. The, the theme music... Also, I just love how they're doing the Cody Vader, and they're doing the um, the pyro as well, and they're yeah. kind of motioning for more, more, more pyro. pyro. <laughs> but they're doing the same thing that they've always done, which is leaning into criticism. Oh, they do too many super kicks, so they do a super kick counter in a match, mm. and it gets into the hundreds. Like yeah. they are very much people that just lean into whatever people don't like about them and they're like, eh, well, here it is. Well, it seems like at first they were shying away from the EVP criticism. Yeah, I don't know if they were shying away from it so much as they were like, well, we have this thing already set up. Because mm. essentially what happened was they got into the fight with CM Punk and then they came back and sort of just tried to pick back up the storyline that they were already doing with the Death Triangle. It just seems like the point at which they could pivot into this they did they did okay yeah at least in my mind like i sure they could have pivoted earlier but i feel like that you lose out on a lot of really fun stuff if they pivot early yeah yeah but i mean what they're doing now is great especially having okada is probably more salt in the wound for people who love okada but don't like the bucks so funny because there's probably a lot of people out there who are like okada's the best wrestler but like oh i hate the bucks but now okada is with the bucks very heavily yes and, and hey, Okada's always liked the Bucks. Yeah. So. Turns, out, turns out a lot of good wrestlers like the Bucks. <laughs> anyway, that is our alignment chart. That's our alignment chart. Um, kind of an odd <laughs> thing to end on. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, let us know what your thoughts are. If you have your own alignment chart, if you think certain people go there, if you don't agree with us, let us know in the comments. And thank you for watching Second, Second Rate, Rate Wrestling. Wrestling. <laughs>